Let's kick off with Jet Engine. So we've got a website, Elemental, Elemental Pro, and Jet Engine installed. We'll add in the other plugins that are part of this series as we come to use them. Now, once you've installed Jet Engine, you want to go over and click Jet Engine on the Jet Engine menu there. And you now get to decide on what extra modules or widgets do you want to add. I'm only interested in the grid gallery and the forms legacy. Now, this forms legacy is actually important for jet appointments and jet booking. So I could technically leave this off. All it does is open up an item over here called forms, which is more for submissions. So to be honest, for a lot of you, you may just want to go with grid gallery. However, if you are going to start setting up events, you may want to go for the calendar. And if you're unsure of what any of these modules are, just click them. There is a helpful video there and a bit of an explanation. So if you were going to have events, you know, when you have the calendar month, April, May, June, July, and all of that across the top, you could go and show that off. But I'm not doing that. I'm also not going to show any maps. So if you were going to have like a listing directory and you had a list of all of your personal trainers or web designers, you might have a map that pinpoints where they are around the world. Again, I'm not focusing on that, but you can go in and experiment with these two, what you want to go for. I am going to be using Elemental, Elemental Pro for the loop grid. So I'm going to try and blend in the fact that a lot of you probably have got Elemental as well. So we're going to try and get the best out of Crocoblocks Jet plugins. And what can we do with Elemental as well? Because they kind of go hand in hand in a nice way. On the performance tab, I've disabled everything except Elemental View because I'm not going to be using a lot of the features inside the block view and I'm not using bricks. And if you do go and do the optimized DOM, you do get a bit of a warning message there. So I am just going to leave it with Elemental View there. I'm going to go to the Skins Manager. I'm not importing anything there. Short code generator, I'm not fussed about that. Macros generator, I'm going to leave that intact. Now, the glossaries is actually quite important. This is something that is very similar to what you would be doing with taxonomy, where you create categories almost. But I like the way the glossaries work. And we will explore this later on in a later video or part of this big series when we need to address it. And if we go down to the form settings, if you decide you want to integrate with MailChimp or Active Campaign, you can do that. Or you want to go and put in your keys for recapture, you can do as well. So from the get go, the settings for, for this are quite simple. I've just flown through it. You know, I haven't sat there pondering, well, am I going to go for this or not? It's not that difficult for you to get through. Right. Now let's get the most out of what is the point of using Jet Engine. When it comes to custom post types and custom fields, a lot of us tend to go with advanced custom fields. The trouble is though, you gotta kinda go to ACF Pro if you wanna start using repeater fields and some other elements of that as well. If you wanna get all of that in one bundled package, then Jet Engine is a definite solution for you. So let's go and create our first custom post type. We're gonna go down to post type and it's really, really simple this. We're gonna go and click add new. I'm going to call it sessions that will automatically create the slug. I mean, it's always going to be in lowercase, so don't modify that. Then I'm going to go and click labels. Now, I recommend you don't actually change these unless you really feel the need to do it. Because a lot of these items like add new item, you could change this to say add new session, new session, edit session, etc. But I personally don't really see the point in doing a lot of that. Um, you're just creating a lot of extra work for you unless you really feel the need or your client says they really want you to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to skip basically all of that. Let's now go to the advanced settings. You can actually leave all of this as it is. Have a read of what it is telling you. You have left default activated, but I would leave that except two things. One of them is the menu icon. Now, when your custom post is created, it's going to sit probably somewhere about here above the jet engine down there and it will have this pin as its symbol. You may decide you don't want to go for that, so you might go for image, and then you might pick this image symbol. Now, I have to say, the menu icons and the descriptions aren't exactly intuitive. Like, this looks like a key. It's actually network. What has that got to do with a network? I don't know. I personally like to just leave them as a post with a pin, so I can very quickly see them. I don't often like to have too many different icons, especially if that icon is already being used for something else but it depends on you and your client. What is important though is what we get down here. Title and editor. If you were in a normal WordPress post, by the way, there's your title, there's your editor. 
On the left or the right hand side, sorry, you will have things like categories, featured, featured images, discussion and stuff like that. At the moment, we only have title and editor for our custom post type. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go and pick featured image. I could also pick comments. I could also pick author. I could also pick excerpt. Now, it very much depends on what do you want to have visible for you or the user or the editors or the authors to go in and start completing in. I think you should leave title and thumbnail so that when you go to the post, you'll have the title block. You will not have the editor, but you will have the item over here to do the featured image. You're probably thinking by removing the editor, how can we actually add any content, any blurb, any funky words? Don't worry, we will later on add in a custom field for the description. So we're being very specific over where people start to enter in their details. Now let's go down to meta field. This is where we would actually go and add our field. We're going to cover that in a later video because I want to cover something called the glossaries first before we do that. The admin column will also cover off once we've built out our meta field. So we've got something we need to show. That in a nutshell is the custom post type created. So we've called it sessions. Now I'm going to hit add post type. And down here, we now have our custom post type sessions. I said it would be higher up. It's actually down there. You go and click that and there are no posts at moment because we've just gone and created it. You click add new and there's very little you can do here except go and give a title and go and set the featured image. And we will do that later on once we've added in our custom fields. But in the next video, we're going to cover off glossaries.